Hi, this is Jascha Hoa from the Co-Creation Foundation and I'm here in Davos at the end of the World Economic Forum 2022. I've been invited by, by a special group who is interested in impact investing and sustainability to join this group for the days here at the World Economic Forum and I took the opportunity to get a first-hand experience. I've never been here. I've never been at the World Economic Forum or its fringe events because obviously I didn't get access to the real World Economic Forum, um, sort of where, where the very important people of this world meet. Um, but I've been invited, so I took the opportunity to get a first-hand experience and get a sniff of the atmosphere here and some idea of what's going on because this is an important event for many years, um, important politics and global issues have been discussed here and I'm sure it also had a lot of influence on world politics and um, uh, world economy. So I went here, joined this group and um, had a look around and I have to say my expression is like Basically, I'm sitting here on the Alm, on the magic mountain of Thomas Mann's Zauberberg in Germany, the novel by Thomas Mann. Um, I'll come to that later and I'm sitting here to get some tranquility and some peace in nature after this experience. Um, I had my moments, I had my crises and now I'm, I'm back here um, on the Alm. So, when I look back at the days here at the World Economic Forum, I would say it, it's not really a World Economic Forum. Um, it's more like it's basically a festival. I had the impression it's something like it's, it's a festival of a special uh, bubble, a special in-group, maybe of people sharing the same ideology, the same worldview or paradigm. And that is basically the paradigm of the globalization of the 90s. And it still is. It's still these kind of people meeting here. And I'm probably telling nothing new, but it's, it's different if you sort of experience it the first time for yourself um, to be here and, and to, to, to see what is happening. And as any other festival, um, those people meeting here are in their small, well, echo chamber, really. And they're sending out their, their messages to the world. And the world was listening and still is listening. And so one really has to, to think about what, what it is and what's going to happen here. One thing which strikes me most is that I feel a format like this, a festival like this, reflects the, the, the mindset of the people attending it. And you can see how a society would be like if those people would totally rule society. And Davos is something like a, a mini cosmos of um, of this worldview, of this paradigm of neoliberal um, globalization uh, for a week. And you can see what would happen to a society um, if this worldview would be totally applied to all, all places in the world. Uh, just to give you a few examples, obviously if you come to Davos and if you uh, go here, uh, you have to pass a checkpoint, a police checkpoint. Um, there is police and military everywhere. The really important people hide behind fences. Um, no one has access and can get access. It's not transparent. Of course, they broadcast important speeches out to the world, but it's a really exclusive, privileged circle of people meeting here. And this sort of trickles down to even the small fringe events on the promenade, which is sort of the, the shopping mall of Davos, where all um, local stores have been hired by big companies or by um, countries um, to have an own venue, an own event space to have their own program there. And you also get only access to this program if you're invited, RSVP. Um, 
So basically what uses to be in normal times a sort of open public shopping mall and space becomes at the World Economic Forum a place for people being privileged, people being part of in-groups where you need special invitations to get in. And an interesting side effect is that because all these companies rent out these spaces, the shops and restaurants, only very few restaurants are left. So if you're not um, placed in a hotel, it's really hard to get some food. There are still some restaurants open, but most of them are closed. Um, so you have to go to, to the Migros or some, some, some supermarket to get some food or just uh, don't eat or something. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is um, in this week, like public um, infrastructure doesn't work anymore because it's just hijacked by all these event spaces, um, which are exclusive and are only open for privileged people. And then if you come to the sort of very privileged who, who attend the main event, they are only driving around in this huge black limousines with their drivers, even if they only have to cover a distance of a couple hundred meters to get to the next venue, they're dr driven in these huge vehicles, um, diesel vehicles, from one place to the other, so that on the promenade you get a traffic jam of black limousines with tinted windows. And that is really, really weird. I mean, I, I don't know if it's just my high sensitivity to things like that, but it strikes me as, as utter madness, really. So I felt very, very bad being here and, and experiencing that. And so if it comes down to the formats, um, it's just one panel after the other. There is no art. There is no open um, discussion. There is one panel after panel after panel after panel. And in between, you might find some time where you can network. But of course, networking is also driven by some kind of economic logic. Like you don't meet people because you want to meet people, but you want to sell them your product or your business or you want to get an investment or whatever opportunity you're seeking for. And don't understand me wrong. Um, these kind of events, I think, are important. Networking events are important and people enjoy themselves and they find like-minded people. And it's a great experience for most people who are here um, uh, and who are looking for exactly that. You know, just um, some input and some networking opportunity in their field of business. And that's totally fine, I, I think. It stops being fine at the point where um, it becomes such a privileged, ex privileged exclusive uh, um, endeavor for everyone. So that, that, that is really scary. And apart from that, most of the content wasn't really good. I mean, it was like you're sitting there listening to a panel of 20 minutes, 40 minutes, people mostly, um, again, these privileged people talking about their great, amazing project and how they uh, save the world by uh, making more money with the project. And um, the content is so bad and uninspiring that, you know, if it were a YouTube clip, you would just click it away after a couple of seconds and you wouldn't really take 40 minutes to sit there and listen to this utter nonsense, basically. So here's another thing which really strikes me. And that is, Everyone here is talking about equality and sustainability and the sustainable development goals. But actually, I, I, my feeling was no one has really, no one really understood them or understands what it is about. It is just another sort of marketing pitch to sell products. And again, I believe most people here think that their businesses, their projects, their startups are 
contributing to some kind of change to make the world better. And almost every pitch starts like that. Like we are doing this great pit, uh, project here, this great business, this great business case or startup um, to make the world a better place, to improve sustainability or uh, to contribute to equality. But in the end, what really counts is that you make a profit out of it. And so if you walk down the promenade here at the World Economic Forum, you just everywhere you see these, these, these advertisings from companies quoting things like planet and profit or um, sustainability and value creation and all this kind of stuff. And it really strikes me as, as completely empty and out of real content. So in a way, it still is the old ma mindset of the 90s. And it uses the words which seem to be sort of, which seem to bring legitimacy to the businesses of today. But actually no one, virtually no one, or I, I'll come to those people, almost no one has really a deeply honest, transformative approach to economics or business here. At least I didn't see any. And I, it, not just the, the, the sessions I attended, I also watched a lot of things uh, being published and broadcasted live on YouTube and on the World Economic Forum channel. Um, and there was nothing new. There was nothing inspiring. There was no, no impulse, no new an angle, no new perspective. It was all old thinking, really old thinking, boring old thinking. I've been with a crowd here who means really well. And I believe that many of them, I can't say how many of them, but many of them um, are really trying to contribute their best and are really struggling hard to find sustainable solution to the kind of businesses they, they are doing here. If that is possible, I, I wonder, because of course there are limits. Uh, I mean, nature and life is abundant. And I also believe that growth is a phase of life and there's nothing, nothing wrong per se about growth if it is one part of the life cycle. But to believe that you can live a luxury lifestyle jet, jetting around the world from one place to the other, uh, making millions and millions of dollars, um, building startups, selling them uh, for huge sums outselling them to, to, to even larger um, already settled companies and connecting this, this with a sustainable business case, that strikes me as not only naive but as, as, as delusional. And so, yes, I have met some people here with great ideas and business cases I truly believe in. But most of it I've seen here is utter bullshit. And th there is a group, and I believe that the group I was part of is, is part of this, who are really trying hard to make Davos the next cool place of sustainable development with the means of a global economy or a high-tech economy. And, and there's a a lot of well-meaning in this and maybe some really important uh, solutions as well um, and, and uh, I have not enough experience to really say or uh, evaluate if this is, is working or not um, and, and I've even seen some very freakish things like there was a crop circle woman here, there was Deepak Chopra, there was, um, uh, what's this called, this guru, um, a Sadhguru was here, uh, there's a psychedelics house, um, of course blockchain and Web 3.0 is a big thing here, 
uh, not only to save the world but also to make big money and 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 uh, impact and um, yeah but but somehow the, the Davos is not the burning man so if you want this kind of stuff why not go to burning man Davos is and will be forever I believe from experience this year for the last days will be the festival of the neoliberal globalization elite with the mindset and paradigm of the 90s so you know I don't mind people who want to make money and I don't mind people at all who are into growth actually I believe as it is part of the life cycle I believe we need people who want to grow things who want to change massively and if that goes along with a character who wants to you know experience abundance and even luxury I don't mind that either um, I, 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 I really believe it's even important that we have these people and that they they pursue these goals but they have to be part of a bigger picture they have to be, to be part of a bigger scenery and part of a bigger co-creation for for changing and transforming this world to a better place and so Davos I was told this year after last year was the pandemic this year wasn't visited that much and I felt basically I felt it was it was somehow disconnected there was a huge disconnect the people in their limousines weren't disconnected to the public the people in the event spaces were disconnected to to the event space next door um, whole Davos in in this beautiful Alp region is disconnected somehow to the rest of the world you can only get here by helicopter or private jet or long car drives so that's a huge disconnect and I feel if we really want to think about economy and new ways to establish new ways of economy which serves the people and the planet there, there are a couple of things we have to do the first is we really have to go into deep transformative processes not just on a societal level or level of our business cases but also on a personal level like honestly if you do breath work in an event space with a powerpoint presentation in the background and loudspeaker sounds but you have this beautiful nature here so why not go up here and do the breath work here uh, that that is such a such a I can't even say it, it, it it's so it's so artificial um, so completely out of touch so I believe I believe actually after this experience Davos is dead um, this paradigm is dead and whatever effort you do to bring new ideas and sustainability and cool um, burning man lifestyle to Davos it it doesn't work it won't work uh, the, the energy the atmosphere the mindset is set and it won't change anymore if it would people would already be completely on their own transformative path and they aren't they they are just not so here's what I think if you really want to change something and if you really want to bring positive change and real transformation and co-creation to the field of economy start something new start a new format start something which is completely hasn't been seen for um, a friend of mine Emil Einer Fries he talks about the build rather than the burn so why not do a festival where we co-create and build the new economy and the new uh, governmental and, and political systems and social innovations and where we 
start being open, transparent, co-creative, uh, and make this huge festival where also the important and like important in the classical sense and powerful and even rich people come and bring all the energy and their 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 their, their lust to grow and their their. Um, that drive to grow and to excel and and to innovate to that place because here this is not going to happen it's not going to happen anymore and it won't and i don't know if you if you're familiar of this and i just found out when i was here even though i knew the background of davos of course uh, it's also the place of a famous novel of thomas mann uh, the magic mountain and I'm actually sitting on this magic mountain uh, where the sanatorium is um, uh, where where uh, the the novel happens and uh, this is a novel about the the outbreak of the first world war and it it is about totalitarianism and uh, and liberal democracy and how how at that time before the second world war um, the whole liberal democratic idea was on the big threat of totalitarianism and actually failed and i just walked here and i found this uh, quote from from the magic mountain and i just want to read it to you because i feel it is so amazing um, that it is here. I, I read it in German and then I, I try to translate it. It's probably not the best translation, but in German it says, Wird auch aus diesem Weltfest des Todes, auch aus der schlimmen Feuerfieberbrunst, die rings den regnerischen Abendhimmel entzündet, einmal die Liebe steigen? So it says, will from this world feast of death from this evil feverish fire which ignites the rainy evening sky once love emerge and i mean there's just such a great metaphor uh, the the world feast of death i mean I don't want to be an unfair, but the way I experienced the World Economic Forum at Davos, the, this is exactly the mindset which brought us all the catastrophes of our times. The climate uh, uh, change and, and the poverty and the misery and yes, economy did also do a lot of good, but now it's time to change that mindset. And so, if I would give you a recommendation to everyone who really wants to contribute to a transformative world and co-create a better world, don't go to Davos anymore. I won't. Um, make something, make something new. Make something nice. Uh, make it everywhere. Make it all over the world, not just in one place. And start to build and co-create the better and next future we really need now. Yeah. <clears throat>